Hi everyone, welcome back to the Home Spa Beauty Podcast, it's Elaine here. Now today I wanted to talk to you about just simple, easy lifestyle hacks, just for wellness, just to feel good within your life. Because as we know, life is challenging, it's stressful and it is quite competitive. You've always been able to opt in and out of competitive elements of life if you're going for jobs or if you want to be the best at a particular area, maybe it's sport But now it feels as if it's really competitive more than it's ever been, just because of what we see now, particularly with social media. It's so heavily stylized. Instagram is now so carefully constructed, often without genuine realness. Even a lot of filmed YouTube videos, they're perfectly shot, they're edited, they've got effects over them so that what you're seeing isn't actually a true reflection of what is being filmed. And that can be very stressful because if you don't realise that you are consciously or unconsciously competing with people, then you can actually find that you don't even realise that your stress levels are climbing because you think that you should be aiming for this perfect life, this perfect lifestyle, when it doesn't actually exist. Now, as we know, reality is different, but we can all agree that wellness is something that we all aspire for. And so long as we can realise that perfection doesn't really exist, we aim for a balance. And I believe that if you aim for a balance in your wellness, in your approach to lifestyle, then you really should be as healthy and well and happy as you can be. Obviously we've all got ups and downs but sometimes I feel it's our duty when we have YouTube channels or if anyone works with a lot of elements of social media and what they do, it's your duty to say when something is not quite true to life or not real or it's an altered image or it's altered results I believe that it's our duty to point that out because some people do actually take it at face value so here's some easy simple lifestyle hacks that I think work for me and they may well work for you just to give me that balance and that wellness approach so the first thing is food now food is fuel and nutrition is the key So when we talk about a balanced diet, we don't talk about restricting your calories. We talk about the diet as in the food that you consume. So finding the diet that works for you. And what I mean by that is the types of food that work for you and the quantity that works for you means that you can work out your own eating plan, your own menu. You can include and leave out foods that do and don't work for you. And that should really help you to keep your nutrition at optimum. Now I say optimum but sometimes your body does play tricks on you and if you've got any deficiencies or any ailments or any disorders then you could do everything in your power to try and get that balance but you might need some assistance, some help. Sometimes you know that you're overindulging. Sometimes you also know that you're not fueling your body enough. It could be that you're taking in the wrong foods and drinks It could be that you know you've got the balance wrong. Think about when you have cravings. It could mean that there's something, again, there's something off in the balance or you might not be feeding your body the kind of fuel that it would benefit from optimally. Maybe you've got intolerances, but you don't even realise you've got them. So you might need to actually keep a bit of a food diary to work out when you eat things, how you feel. Now, sometimes these are down to something that's not quite right in the body. It could be something that's genetic, something that has developed as you've gotten older. It could be hormone imbalances. It could be something that is undiagnosed, an undiagnosed condition that you actually need some clarification from a medical expert. It can be stress, tiredness. There are so many reasons. And what you might need to do, as I was saying, is take medical advice Go to a nutritionist, ask your doctor just to get clarification. Sometimes it can be all sorts of tests that they can do just to confirm that there's something not quite right within you, which means that you're not getting your optimum nutrition or you're not taking in the correct foods for your body because everyone really is different. But if you're beyond that, if you're happy that you know that you don't have any intolerances 
or there's no imbalances or conditions that you need to work with, then if you really want to find out how to make your body run it at its best and really kind of get your nutrition to where you want it to be again without becoming obsessive just taking an interest in it to get that balance right for you then you could delve into the whole host of nutritional approaches that are available now for us to read about to watch videos about to listen to podcasts with and that can be again an approach to overall wellness now, there are so many experts, both locally and online, and there'll be famous names that you'll recognise. Again, you want to look for someone that's qualified and inspiring to you. Um, some people, again, that fall into that category that I like to look for for inspiration. And it's not necessarily about following word for word. It's just about looking to these people, delving into their blogs, delving into podcasts and videos. When you're looking for some key advice or some motivation, are people like Joe Wicks, the body coach, the Lean Machines and Glynis Barber and Fleur who do the NSYNC diet. Because what you'll find is that from Everyone, now beyond these, there are so many more people than I've mentioned, but what you tend to find is you can have some basic education, you can have some information at your fingertips, and a lot of the time as well, you can actually now just contact them and ask questions. So they're always open, and again, not just these people, so many nutritionists, wellness experts, fitness experts, they'll take Twitter, Instagram, YouTube questions and they'll answer them. And it's quite good because sometimes you can know what you want to do. You can know what you want to achieve in your diet. You can know if you're overindulging or you're lacking motivation. And sometimes you can look to these people and they've just got small snippets of information that can allow you to just get back on the right path, to clarify something that you thought you knew, to correct something that you didn't realise you were doing wrong, that can make a massive difference to how you feel through just tidying up, if you like, your diet. But again, with food being fuel and looking at your nutrition, You've got to make sure that you don't take anything too far. So again, if it's for wellness, we need to remember that we want to have treats. We want to have a healthy balance. We want to have things to look forward to. But again, it's about how often you do it. And in today's world, it can be very confusing because we can be getting bombarded with these so-called healthy snacks which can turn out to actually be very heavily manufactured with no natural ingredients just a whole bunch of chemicals sometimes you go low sugar it can be high fat Um, sometimes you just don't know where to look so just again having that balanced approach and trying where possible to eat the most natural version of things and by that what I mean is If you're going to have a cake, have a cake, but you may as well either make one yourself so that you know what the ingredients are or go to an outlet or a baker's where you know that they're actually making them from scratch and not necessarily buying one from the shelves when you don't actually know what's going into it. And it's a bunch of chemicals, a bunch of additives and maybe the true natural ingredients that would go into making that cake have been lost along the way because there's so many additions that you didn't really need. But again, we do need treats. So as I always say, if you want the takeaway, have the takeaway, but just don't have it every day, every week. Make it something to really look forward to. If you want to have the chips, have the chips. If you want to, again, have the chocolate, have it. Just don't have it every day and don't have it in huge quantities. It really is about getting back to the appreciation of it and incorporating it into your diet as a treat. And I actually was sent an air fryer by a company again through YouTube. Sometimes people ask me if I want to try things. And I'd always been interested in trying an air fryer, but I never really knew where I would use it and why. And then it occurred to me that sometimes when you are trying to be focused on eating as healthily as you can, again, I'm never obsessive about diet, but I do try not to overindulge. And sometimes we all know that we are overindulging and we have to pull it back a bit. So I agreed I would try out the air fryer. And the first thing I thought, what's the one cliched thing that Scottish people probably are known for eating most of all, probably fried foods. So a lot of the time you go to your local chip shop and it's fish and chips, rolls and chips, 
all uh, you can name it will be deep fried um you probably know the cliches because they're true you can have deep fried mars bars i've actually tried one and they are delicious but i've only ever tried one in my entire life i don't think you could eat them very often i should also say that when they first came out our local chip shop actually deep fried any chocolate that they could get their hands on because it was a brand new concept so i also had a deep fried cream egg and a deep fried topic and they were also really good they were so delicious because they were melted chocolate and bad what's not to love but again I'm talking about getting the balance I tried them once about 20 years ago and that was it now I know that there's no place in my diet for them very often but when I thought I'd try the air fryer I thought the classic thing to try was chips and you know what they didn't taste exactly the same as deep fried because they're not but it was a brilliant alternative what you were basically doing was giving yourself that treat but doing it in a healthier way so I would say if you really do struggle with getting your balance right and you know that you love the fried foods and you know that you love the battered foods but you're really looking for that balance then maybe you could look into something where it cheats you and it isn't always completely authentic but the cheat is as good as the next best thing. So you could look at something like an air fryer and if you didn't want to look at something like that then obviously they always say baking is better than frying but again life's too short it really is again for wellness getting that balance and if you really don't know where to start look at those experts that are so easily accessible online and just start bit by bit to introduce yourself to simple bits of education and really simple to follow recipes just to get you on that track and then before you know it you're inspired you can be creating your own recipes and you're on that path. Another lifestyle hack just for your overall wellness is to find the exercise that works for you. Now, for men and women, exercise is so important in our daily lives, but sometimes we believe that we don't have any time for it or we don't need it, but we really do. So for women, exercise is key because it really does help us keep the balance. It's good for your mental health. It's obviously good for your body. It can really help us as we age to keep our bones and muscles strong. There are so many hormonal changes just throughout our entire lives. But particularly when you're approaching and going into menopause, you really have to make sure that you're looking after your bone density and your muscle mass. And the same for men, as you age, just just naturally what happens is everything starts to decrease bit by bit and if you don't look after your muscle strength and your bone density then before you know it you won't realise that you're losing it and you're weakening and it's such a gradual process that you can make it a far harder task when you decide if you do at all that it's time to do something about it. So the key for overall wellness is to find exercise that works for you and if you get bored change it up, try new things things but it really is key. Even when you think you can't fit exercise in you really have to try. 10 minutes can be better than nothing at all. Obviously check with your doctor if there's any medical issues just make sure you're okay but ideally what you're looking for is a mixture between something to get the heart pumping which is your cardio, something weight bearing you know lifting your weights or doing something that's working with muscle strength and also your stretching and your flexibility. Your body really will thank you for it. And remember, it can be outdoors, indoors. You can go to the gym. You can go to classes. You can watch YouTube videos. You can be motivated with downloads and podcasts and you name it. There's so many different ways that you can choose the exercise that works for you and you can do it anywhere. Now, when I used to work in lecturing and you were having to travel Early starts, sometimes very late finishes if you were teaching a night class and going straight into it. Now I'm freelance and I very much work for myself now and it's it's a different lifestyle because I'm not sure week to week where I'll be. But when I was stationed within campuses, it was really hard to fit exercise in because you were leaving before eight in the morning. Um, sometimes you were back for dinner time between five and six o'clock you just want to make the dinner eat it and relax you don't want to do anything if you're doing a night class you might not be back until well after nine at night so you're tired so in those situations if you asked me if I could do a fitness class sometimes if you had friends around that said look let's do this class yes you could be motivated if the time worked for you and you weren't too tired 
But there's other times when, with the greatest will in the world, you just don't have the energy. And you know yourself that you just want to eat, relax and get ready for bed. So in those days, if you can, just even get out at lunchtime and just have a little walk about, get some fresh air, just get everything moving, get the muscles stretching. What was handy, again, for me, where I worked, they also had a sports department, so they would run exercise classes at lunchtime. But again, that doesn't always work. That doesn't always suit. But when it does, you can go for it. And hopefully you'll be near somewhere where you can either get out and get the movement or there might even be classes nearby. There might be a gym nearby or exercise classes in the hall. There could be options. So if you know that before or after work isn't an option, then maybe look at the weekend or look at in the day even if it is just walking up and down the stairs at work, just to feel as if you get the heart pumping, just something, because you're banking that and it it is doing something for your body. What you shouldn't rule out though, is the social element of exercise. Now you really can't overlook that because it can be far more beneficial than you realise. It can be as simple as finding a class and getting to know a few familiar faces there and then over time they become friends. It could be um, doing your morning run and you get to see the same faces when you're running in the park. Uh, Sometimes, again, it can just be different locations. I've been on holiday and I've decided to, once it was a cruise, decided to do the early morning yoga class on the cruise. And it was the same people that would do that class and you got to know their faces and the social element was really enjoyable. Because sometimes if you're trying a new class such as yoga, sometimes half the fun is not actually being very good to begin with and laughing with each other because you feel you're elegant and then you look in the mirror and you realise that nobody looks as elegant as they thought they did in their head. And sometimes it can be because you're trying a new class and you feel as if your coordination isn't quite there, but you can all laugh about it. So regardless of what it is, don't rule out the social element of exercise too because it really is good for that endorphin boost and it really does help with your wellness. Another lifestyle hack for wellness is definitely finding something that makes you happy, whether it be a pastime, an interest, a hobby. Now, I'm sure we've all got things that we love to do that we're struggling to find the time. And I was actually thinking about this before I created this podcast. And for me, it's guilty of loving to read books, building up a pile of books that I cannot wait to read. And I just don't find the time. And they stack up and they stack up. And last year I made a New Year's resolution to read a book a month. The previous year I had managed it and I loved it. And last year it just didn't happen. And there were lots of different reasons why it didn't happen. Work, um, lots of things happening with websites. I ran a pop-up shop with Eponymous, which is the online shop that we run. Just didn't have the time. Exhausted when I came home. Had every intention of doing something. Um, Sometimes I was switching it with podcasts or watching YouTube videos. So I was still getting my downtime, but I was ignoring one of the interests that truly makes me happy. And that was books. Now, what I'm guilty of when things are a little bit quieter is that sometimes I still don't get round to them because if I'm being truthful with myself, I'll surf the net. I'll scroll down social media. I'll read posts. If I'm being absolutely honest, it's maybe half an hour and I look back and think, mm, what, why did I do that? Didn't really learn. Just scrolling. Didn't really take anything in. Didn't really take anything away from it. Just scrolling, I suppose, if you're being honest, just being nosy. Didn't actually take anything away from it. Sometimes, again, it's going on to those well-known online newspapers and just wasting half an hour reading what's clearly placed product placements and key interviews and advertising, advertorials, if you like. And you come away from it, you think, well, didn't really take anything from that. So what I try to do, which I don't always manage to do very successfully is when I know that I'm starting to waste time scrolling through these online newspapers and scrolling social media is think no do you know what I could be reading that book that I really have had my eye on and I've just been putting it off and finding other things to do so I would say that if you're guilty of that too then maybe take a moment and think about it and realize that the actual interests that you've got the actual pastimes and the hobbies that you're interested in will give you far more reward and far more enjoyment than just scrolling social media. Ultimately, it's about relaxation. So when you pick a pastime for relaxation, 
it really should involve an element of complete switching off, just involving your time with that. And sometimes with a pastime, if you don't feel like doing it, the ultimate relaxation could be doing nothing at all. And the joy that comes from just taking a moment to switch off. Sometimes what you'll find is that just allowing yourself to even switch off and flip on an audiobook could actually mean that you are able to just take the busyness from your brain and just park it and just let the audiobook roll over you and just absorb it and just take your time listening to it. Obviously, it's ideal to do this when there's not too much happening or what you'll find is that you weren't really paying attention and you didn't really get the effects of it. So audiobooks, podcasts can be great when you're travelling to and from work, if you're in the car, driving, and then what you'll find is it's you time. There's nothing that's interrupting. You can even dip into it, you can pause it and then it's something to really look forward to. If you are really a crucial part and you're really enjoying it, And then you either go to work and do your full day's work, but you cannot wait. You've got that excitement. Can't wait to get back into that book or podcast. Can't wait to find out what happened. That can actually really make you happy because you've got something that you're working up to. You're counting down the hours because it brings you joy and it makes you happy. And again, it releases those endorphins. It can also be something as simple as finding the next box set. But again, you want a box set that truly does bring you relaxation and for some people it can be programs that for others they'll be like oh no that would actually stress me out I don't actually like watching anything that's horror or too too depressing but other people absolutely love that and they cannot wait and they love the thrillers and the psychological thrillers and if that's what brings you joy because you really get into it and you get stuck right in and you're engaged then do that dip in and out And what you'll find is you can even find YouTube channels where that person uploads regular content and they've just got you hooked. And it could sometimes, I mean, I get told on my YouTube channel, sometimes it's not the content, but it's just the relaxation that they gain from it. And I don't take that in the wrong way at all. If you are finding relaxation and it's making you happy through watching my channel, I'm happy with that. But it is funny sometimes when a comment says, oh, I'm really not interested in anything that you do. I just enjoy the channel. (laughs) And I know they don't mean it negatively, but I think if I was more thin-skinned, I'd be like, oh, thank you. (laughs) Thanks very much. I'll just pop a wee video on next time where I've not actually tried. (laughs) But I get what they mean. It's just the relaxation. There's something that clicks and something that works for you. And I get that. So if I can bring you a little bit of joy, I'm on board with that. Another way to bring wellness into your lifestyle is, now I hope you're on board with this and I hope you understand it, getting back to basics with what you consider treats for yourself because I really do think sometimes we make ourselves stressed because we forget the basics of what makes you happy and treating yourself because we effectively are, whether we want to admit it or not, we're spoiled nowadays. So think back to when you were younger When you got treats, they were exciting because they were occasional. Everyone's different, obviously. We all knew someone that we thought was more spoiled than us. And we also knew someone and we thought, oh, I get more treats than them. I'm so glad that I'm in this house because I knew people that they didn't get, um, they weren't allowed biscuits. And I thought, oh no, I couldn't live in a house like that. I need my biscuits. But then you would know people that they literally just had everything they wanted when they wanted it. And you thought, oh, I'd love that. But looking back they didn't appreciate it because it was just on tap. So think back to when you were allowed treats because I think you'll understand what I mean here. I think if you strip it back to what you considered was a treat and where we are now, I think it helps to get back to basics. So when I was younger, we didn't take treats for granted. Now, obviously we weren't hard done by at all. But when you think about it in your youth, a treat probably was a trip to the cinema because it wasn't all the time. Uh, meals out again when when we were younger you went for meals out for a special occasion not just because it was Wednesday you actually had a special occasion for a meal out takeaways weren't all the time so if we were getting a takeaway it would be for a particular purpose not just three times a week it really was occasional Um, even things like cakes and 
you know, being allowed to go to the bakers and being told that you can pick a treat, you can pick a cake. It wasn't all the time. It wasn't every week. You didn't go into the cupboard and you were like, right, which cake will I have today? They were treats. They might have been, I mean, it wasn't a rare treat, but it wasn't something that was just at your fingertips. So if you're honest with yourself, and this is what I've been thinking about recently for me, is we are spoiled now. And if we want it, we get it. Think about the last time that you saved up for something. Did you really save up for it? Did you remember when you were younger, it might have been the top that you wanted, the trainers that you wanted. Um, If you wanted to go to a special restaurant, a lot of the time it was a case of you're going to have to save up for it. You're going to have to make it a destination. Maybe you knew that your birthday was coming up or you knew Christmas was coming up and you thought, right, I will be able to go there because I'm going to have a bit more money. Or if my birthday's coming up, I'll ask for those trainers. And if everyone chips in, then I'll be able to get them and I'll have some money left over. We don't do that now. If we want it, we get it. I think it could be good for our overall wellness if we just step back and start to appreciate what we've got and I'm not saying strip it back as in deny yourself everything but maybe just look at what you can see are constant indulgences and think back to when you did actually see them as a treat and for me what I try to do now is I try to get that balance back so I try to hold off so that everything isn't just at my fingertips now Again, I'm not denying myself anything, but now what I try to do is say, if I really do want something, can I do without it for a month? Do I really need it? Am I just doing it because it's convenient and I don't really appreciate it? And I've really stripped it back. So the basics for me now are, I don't actually get takeaways very often. I will save them now for a particular reason, a special occasion, or if I really think, right, this has been a hectic week. I've not had a chance to do much cooking. I'm going to treat myself to a takeaway. Or it's somebody's birthday. Tell you what, let's go out to a restaurant and just try and not make it something that you just do absentmindedly and you just don't enjoy it at all. I think if we can actually do that and if you can just stop almost going to the supermarket and just piling in the cakes and piling in the indulgences and just thinking, oh, well, who cares? Just whatever, not really thinking about it. If you do strip it back and you think about the gratitude of what you're treating yourself to and why you're doing it, I believe for me as well, it actually makes for a balance and a wellness and it makes me appreciate the little things because I do think we're all in danger of just being so commercialised and everything's at your fingertips and you just spend, spend, spend and you don't really give it a thought that you don't realise that you're, you're not really appreciating the little things. So that's another tip that I I feel works for me. Strip the treats back to basics and just think, do I really need this? Do I want to save it for, you know, this is a treat. I am treating myself. I deserve this. That really does work for me. So finally, and it leads on from this about stripping it back to basics. If you can find the joy in every day, even just the little things in life that when you're not thinking about it again, you take them for granted. I feel that that brings a wellness into your life that money can't buy. So something like waking up during the day and the sun is shining through the window. Sometimes you don't actually take it for granted, but if you sit and think about it, and again, it's probably because I enjoy yoga, I enjoy meditation, I enjoy the element of gratitude in your meditations. And in yoga, they always ask you to think about peace and joy and love and to think about all the things that you're grateful for when you wake up and it's a sunny day just find the joy in it when you wake up and you really enjoy that first cup of tea or coffee find the joy in it if you go to a class and you really loved it for me if you do a yoga class and you feel as if you manage to do a move and hold it a bit longer or there's a bit of an advanced move that you actually managed to do that you couldn't do before really find the joy in it even if it's an exercise class it was really hard sometimes when you think your brain's saying I can't do this I can't do this just keeping going and telling yourself I can I am doing this you're exhausted but you feel amazing because you proved to yourself you could do it as I mentioned before just you know little treats if you allow yourself that treat and you find the joy in it and it becomes more meaningful, then it means when you go on to buy yourself little purchases 
then you know you do actually you appreciate them more because it is a little moment of joy and you can appreciate the the treat that you're giving yourself and I think you will then take more care of it enjoy it more and it won't become which we've all done a mindless purchase and sometimes when you've been in that frame of mind you can just go about mindlessly purchasing things and you really don't think about them you don't appreciate them you can buy them and they can actually sit in the bag or you can put them in a cupboard a drawer or a wardrobe and you don't actually think about them again because there wasn't any joy in that purchase and you didn't really think about it and you weren't really grateful for it you just did it because you could but again something as simple as allowing yourself that treat of that latte or cappuccino in the afternoon because you know you love it again that is just finding the joy in the day for me finding a sitcom that I find hilarious, a funny film. If you know that you love that particular actor or actress or that particular programme, you actually you have a grin in your face when it's coming on, whether it be on TV or whether you're watching it on Netflix. When you know you're about to be entertained and you know you're going to love it, it's that anticipation of the joy that you're already there, you're already relaxed, you're already smiling because you know you're going to love it. And I feel that that's really uplifting. And again, that's, it just gives you that ability to strike that balance in your life because as you know, there's going to be weeks as we all get them where nothing's going to go your way. It's a stressful week, it's a hard week, it's a challenging week. You've had bad news, you've had upsetting news, you've had intense news. Maybe it's just work is just so intense. People are wanting things from you that you're just struggling to achieve or you can't please your boss. We all get those weeks. We all get weeks when we're not well. Um, it just feels like your energy's not there. So, you know, to find that wellness balance and to just introduce those little hacks when you can, can really make all of the difference. And again, none of us are perfect. Sometimes we know all this and we forget it. It all goes out the window the minute we get a challenging week. But I think if you can even step aside and just take a few minutes just to remind yourself that you have this toolkit, and say, I'm going to park all this stress and all this anxiety and I am going to have that cup of coffee or I'm going to watch five minutes of that YouTube video that I know relaxes me and just almost reboot your thinking and just say, nope, I am not my mind, I'm above my mind, I'm going to take 10 minutes just to zone out, relax and get my wellness back on track and just get my mental health on balance, feel good again, do it for me. Because at the end of the day, that's what we're all doing. We're working through life and we're doing it for us. So I hope you enjoyed that. It's just a few ideas that work for me about trying to get that balance in life. But as always, I would love to hear your input. If you've got any lifestyle hacks for wellness that really work for you, always share them with me. As you know, this podcast is also on YouTube. So you can always leave me a comment there. And if you like the channel, you can subscribe. And I will see you again soon. (music) 